So guys, it has been a couple of days since I released a video. I went in for my LASIK surgery and came out with pretty much crystal clear vision. Other than the bloodshot eyes that I have right now, things have been very seamless and I do really appreciate each and every one of you guys that have reached out to me on Twitter asking me how things are. Things are great right now. I am recovering and there will be a ton more videos coming out very soon. But let's get straight into it and talk about the latest updates that we have in the past few days. During the days that I've had my eyes shut, there has been a lot of good news outside of just Tesla, with the latest one being the Rivian's latest update and their investors day. There is a ton of information that I want to talk about. Coming right on stage, RJ had a lot to talk about the R2 and the R3 platform vehicles. These are going to be the mass marketed low cost vehicles that we have seen with the Model 3 and why this event was packed with a bunch of new updates and upgrades with this new platform and there is so much to talk about with all the components being refreshed renewed and upgraded in so many different ways but the most important part of it all has to be the new autonomous chip. This part of the new upgrade and Rivian's future path is a very important aspect because moving into 2024 and going forward from that, a car is just a car without full self-driving. Now before we get into the main components of the full self-driving chip and comparing the two from Tesla and Rivian, let's talk about some of the cool components that come with this new platform. Now to summarize some of the important highlights and some of the things that I personally like out of this event. The first one has to be the new drive units that we are going to be seeing in the R2 and the R3. One is going to be called Maximus and the other one is going to be called Ascend. These are rather interesting names and I do really like them both. One being based on efficiency and cost while the other one is going to focus on the power and the performance of the motors. And the better part of these motors is the fact that they are now going to be in-house built rather than partnered with Bosch. That means that every component from top to bottom is going to be built by Rivian. Now there is an exhaustive list of things coming with these new models, but I would say the highlights has to be the zonal controller, the structural pack, and the AI aspect of these vehicles. We're gonna leave that all for a future video because I don't want to skip out any of the major components and major details of these R2 and R3s. There is going to be so much packed and there is going to be a car that really revolutionizes the way that we see SUVs. And of course, we are going to compare this to Tesla's very own Model Y. This is going to be such a good comparison and we're going to see what kind of things Rivian has to offer this time around. But as of right now, in terms of the autonomy hardware or the full self-driving hardware computer, we're going to see what Tesla does and what Rivian has achieved to stack up and what the two is like when compared head to head. During the event's talking points, we got to see into the future of Rivian's autonomous platform, lots of details into their development and what they are going to be doing with full self-driving. Looking purely onto their onboard system, we can see that they have outdone Tesla in terms of numbers and redundancy, powering 11 different cameras, 5 radars, and 12 ultrasonic sensors. This gives an entire 360 degree view of the car. This does a ton of overlap that means that this car is ready for the autonomous world. Now what's interesting about all this is that even though they are moving to their second generation AXM 2.0 platform, they have opted not to go the approach of LiDAR even though they have seen the likes of Waymo using it on their vehicles. This is going to be very similar to what Tesla has on their platform right now. That means that they will be basing their system mainly on vision with the redundancies of the other sensors. This is pretty much identical to what Tesla has done and it's still currently doing. Now, the most important part of all this, the thing that is powering the entire system and everything that the system is able to do, and that has to be the CPU and the chipset. This is going to be based off of Rivian's next generation AXM or Rivian's Autonomous Experience Module. Now, the chip here that we will be focusing on and the chip that is going to be coming out in the next couple of months is going to be the version 2.0 powered by NVIDIA. This chip here is going to be the chip that will be in the R2 and R3 and it will be a chip that is approximately 10 times more powerful than the one on R1. With 10 times the power, it will be able to process all the data coming in from various sensors around the vehicle.
vehicle, it will be able to process and power the auto labeling and the model training software that the team has set up. This is going to work across the loop system that they have. And if you want to know more about this, you can head over to Rivian's page and they will have a rundown of everything that's going on. All right, so you've been waiting for this. If we were to compare this to the current hardware in Tezas today, we will find that Rivian's AXM 2.0 is faster than hardware 4. Rivian's second generation AXM is about 10 times more powerful than the last, which puts it at 250 times tops or 250 trillion operations per second. If we were to compare this to hardware 4 running in your Tezas right now, it will be approximately 5 tops faster running at 145 in the hardware 4 versus the 150 in the AXM. When you put it into perspective, it is not an enormous amount. At a 5 tops difference, it will just account for the extra processing for the radar as well as the ultrasonic sensors. But when you do think of the bigger picture, a 5 tops difference is 5 trillion operations per second difference. And if you account for the extra node on each chip as a redundancy, it will be finalized as 10 tops. So when it comes down to it, yes, Rivian's AXM is faster than Tezza's hardware 4. It is really a big achievement how they've caught up so quick and how they have surpassed hardware 3 at that level and speed. And just for reference here, hardware 3, which is running on the majority of cards right now and powering full self-driving supervised, the latest version is able to use it with no issues whatsoever with Elon saying that there is a lot more before they reach the full capacity of this chipset. Now with hardware 3 topping out at 72 tops, whereas hardware 4 and AXM 2.0 topping out at 250, you can see the future potential of these nodes and how incredible they are. But hardware 3 is still no slouch at this point. There is so much more potential out of it. It just goes to show how far these companies are ahead of the game when it comes to hardware and what they're able to do to make these cars fully self-driving. However, with all that said and done and the comparison between hardware 4 and AXM 2.0, both of them being just as powerful as each other, there is no doubt that Tezza is way ahead of the game when it comes to full self-driving hardware. According to Tezza, hardware 4 is on its way here just about 18 months before the chip goes into production and this chip is supposedly 10 times more powerful than hardware 4. That means that it will be 10 times more powerful than AXM 2.0. So clearly, we are not in the same boat when it comes to Tezza and Rivian hardware with Tezza always leading the way but it doesn't change the fact that Rivian is doing an amazing job catching up to the potential of full self-driving and to all their competitors out there. As of right now, I would say that AXM 2.0 is the second fastest chip on the market and comparable to hardware 4 in the majority of ways. The fact that it's even on the same level playing field is an enormous achievement from any company out there. But with the future potential of full self-driving and the future demanding process, they will have to upgrade all these chips to one similar to Hardware 5. Now if you want to know about Hardware 5, all the power it has and the hybrid lens system, definitely go check out my previous video. I will drop it in the description below and up top there. But that is going to be the end game chip that is going to change everything. And that is going to be the chip that will be in the Robo Taxi and future cars to come. So yeah, that is a quick comparison between the two. There is a lot of different development coming out in the next couple of years. And you will see a drastic change between these two companies. I will be keeping an eye on everything and updating you as we go. So make sure you stick around around and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so and follow me on twitter at hey john e over there you guys can chat with me dm me and i will try to respond as quickly as possible always this is it this is john once again peace out